on. I will get to this here in the next couple questions, but that is the one I know. Again, VIP could mean anything, but as far as VIP I know, it's typically a party that Panini throws on Saturdays for those that purchase their products in X amount of dollars. Um, so again, I'll get to that in a minute, but VIP overused for sure. Uh, so what are the silver um, wrapper redemption packs that everyone talks about uh, that you can get through Panini or Tops? Um, so the silver packs through Panini are the ones that I've done. Again, I have very little experience with Tops, but I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but Paninis are, it's a fantastic incentive. Um, so if you're familiar with the Father's Day or Black Friday promotions that Panini runs online or through card shops, it is very similar to this. Typically, these are two card packs that are um, silver um, that have anything in there as far as you have a base card set of current stars in sports, you have a rookie set, and possibly a prospect set, a veteran set, um, so these are going to be base cards and then numbered rookies at a nine ninety nine or veterans at a four ninety nine or less. Um, lots of different players, lots of different sports: racing, golf, basketball, hockey, soccer, all sorts of different things. Um, you're going to have jerseys. You're going to have um, patches, autographs, redemptions for memorabilia. Um, so I don't know if I have it, but like these are some things you can get redemptions for in packs, like a redemption for an eight by ten autograph of X player. This happens to be Greg Little, um, Edmund Gates. Again, I've kept a lot of these over the years because they're not worth a ton. But Vincent Brown, Montario Hardesty, Donald Brown, Brandon Cooks. Um, so, again, these are typically things that you can get. I've got a signed mini helmet above of Jason and Devin McCourty. I've won a, multiple signed basketballs. I've won. I know somebody one year won a signed helmet of everyone from the previous Pro Bowl on the AFC, and then there's one for the NFC. Um, there's lots of cool things in these packs. They are awesome. They're typically, most of them, as far as like the cards in the actual packs, not the memorabilia and redemption type stuff, most of the cards in the packs are, well, they're all basically national exclusive. Um, in years past, and they had like select basketball refractors at a 15. You could pull Ben Simmons. I mean, those are big cards. So there's other cool stuff in there, but a lot of them are going to be national card convention exclusives. They typically sell well. They don't typically hold their value long term, but they're really cool cards. And for boxes, you're going to bust anyways. These are great extra incentives um, to, to bust these. So um, in the past, though, one of the... In, the kind of the downsides per the, the silver packs per se is going to be, they're not always the most popular product. This isn't go buy a Panini product and come here and bust it. And we give you these silver packs. This is we're letting you choose from these products. This product gets you this many packs. This product gets you this many packs and so on. So for instance, I know last year, some of the products I ended up having was like threads basketball from 16, seven or 16, 17. Yeah. Ben Simmons year prestige basketball contenders draft picks football so they're different products from different years they're typically not the most popular products you're not typically getting um like contenders football or donruss optic basketball they're typically not these products they're typically products that have been undersold and they're still available in mass quantities where card companies like blowout david adams and leaf can sell these at msrp and move them where you get an extra incentive and they get to move product Typically works out well, but they're typically, again, not the best products. Um, so another thing with this is they're typically not available 24-7. So the show runs from, you know, 10 to 7 or 10 to 8 a lot of the days. So Panini may not open the VIP, pa the, the silver packs or wrapper redemptions available to the, everyone until like a certain time. So if when you run in at 10 o'clock, they may not be available right then. They may start at 1 o'clock making them available or noon. So just keep in mind that these aren't always available 24-7. So when you're thinking, if you're like, eh, I may get some silver packs or I may wait, you may want to make up your mind because they may not be available. They try to limit them per day because I can tell you I've been at the National in the past in line when they told us they were out of silver packs. Now, I think they've corrected that, so props to Panini. Uh, but in the past, I know that that has been an issue where they have run out of packs and you've waited in line and they're gone. Or you waited till later in the day and they don't have any more. So something to keep in mind that they're not unlimited quantities typically. So find out if you're going to do it. And I would try to make that a top priority um, if that's something you plan to partake in. Um, 
Um, but Tops, like I said, Tops has a very similar product. Um, they're typically, Tops is um, more focused a lot around baseball. Obviously, they have a baseball license. Um, I know in the past, like, I, the first time I ever saw it was the 2000, the one time I did it and saw it was 2010 in Baltimore when Steven Strasburg was huge. I remember p them letting the general admission in and kids, kids getting trampled as people would run to the Topps booth to get in line. I'm not sure Otani will be the same this year. I would certainly, I'm not sure kids are going to get trampled. Um, you know, I hope they would figure it out. But I would imagine that the, uh, sorry, I had a notification. I, I, w I would imagine that this is a pretty popular event and that people get in line and uh, there's a lot of commotion, especially if Otani's going to be in it. So um, I would imagine it's pretty big. But typically with Tops, it's buy a Bowman, buy a Gypsy Queen, buy an Allen again, or buy some sort of high-end product. I know it was Gypsy or Bowman last year, um, which is Bowman's more expensive. But you buy a box of Bowman or you get, and you get like a one Tops pack. It's got two or three cards in it. They're typically Bowman Chrome, like show exclusives. I used to have a Lindor out of five. They're pretty cool. They look just like Bowman Chrome, but they um, say some additional writing on them. So, again, I can't speak too much to it. I'm sure Tops will release more information, so stay on the lookout for that. Um, so, going back to the VIP party. So, VIP party. The VIP party, I know, is through Panini America. I've done this. The I ended up having a ticket last year. I ended up selling it to Rob because um, he was in town and wanted to go with Jimmy. So, um yeah, I ended up uh, I ended up not going, but the two years prior, I had uh, I had went. It is fantastic. Um, it is, it, it yeah, it's really the one of one of the highlights of the trip. Um, essentially, how it works is you purchase X amount of Panini products. It's typically somewhere around seventy five hundred dollars. Um, you purchase X amount of product um, of these specific products. And you get a, an admission to the event. So I don't know if I have one of my... Yep, I actually have two of my... I have my two tickets in here. Two I still have. So 2016 in um, Atlantic City was this one. And the 2015, the first one I ever went to was in Chicago. And it looked like this. Pretty thick. They're really cool. Um, I kept those. So you get a ticket to the party. So what that entails is... 7500 bucks, you get X cases of products. So they're typically three, four, five, six cases of, again, not the best product, but some sort of product um, that they're willing to move. So you get product. Then you typically get an X number of silver packs. So it's been four to 500 most years. Um, so 400 silver packs guaranteed. If all these boxes add up to a thousand silver packs that Panini would give you if you took them individually, you don't get that. If you get the VIP ticket, you get X amount of tickets that Panini designates. Again, typically somewhere between 400 and 500. Um, and then you get everything that comes at the show. So you go to the VIP party. Um, it's typically Saturday night and Panini's got guests. So if you can actually see up here, that's what all these 8x10s are. Got the other ones from the last year I haven't even hung up. But essentially what you get at the show is you get a black box with a one of one card. You get 100 to 120, 25 gold packs, which are essentially the silver packs I've been talking about, kind of on steroids. They're loaded. They're more of a chrome feature typically. They're really nice cards. Um, they're definitely better than the silver packs. A um, lot more hits, a lot more quantity, bigger names, not as much junk. They're, they're typically pretty good. You get an 8x10 autograph of every individual at the show. So, um, Ricky Williams was one year. This is Jabari Parker. Mike Tyson. Um, I think this is Sandberg. Kareem. Um, so, yeah. You get to, you get an autograph picture automatically of every person. La the Two years ago in Atlantic City, it was Scottie Pippen, Reggie Jackson, Lawrence Taylor, Sean Kemp, Allen Iverson, and Chase Elliott. It was great. That was cool. Those I thought the athletes they were great. It was in a club in the bottom of a casino. You had to go down like an uh, an escalator to get in, um, and it was pretty crowded. I mean, you're talking about 250, 300 people plus athletes, plus servers and food in this tiny club. So it was really, really tight. Especially when like Allen Iverson and Scottie Pippen and Lawrence Taylor and these guys are coming out, and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm close to them. Everybody swarms. So it was kind of chaotic. I didn't go last year, but it looked like there was a lot more space, which is great. And Panini acknowledged that, I think. Um, 
but yeah, just it's it's a fantastic time. So you get to mingle with the athletes. You get the black box one hundred one. You get all the wax. You get the silver packs. You get the gold packs. You get autograph eight by tens. Panini in Atlantic City a couple years ago had supplies um, like box cutter. Uh, I mean, you get so many, so much cool stuff. So uh, it's really, it's really a great time. Panini does a great job with it. I wish I would have done it sooner. Um, again, hindsight's twenty twenty, um, but I, I mean, I love that event. Um, it, it's, I think it would be fun, especially if you know someone's going. The first year I ever went, I, I didn't plan to go. I met Jimmy there. Jimmy and I had been friends before we kind of talked through Instagram. That's where we became friends. Um, but when, but when we got there and he's like, I'm going to go. I'm, well, sure. I, I don't, I'm not buying anything else at this point. I'm going to go. So I ended up going and we had a fantastic time. I post about it, um, quite frequently, especially around this time of the year. It was, it was great. And it was awesome to experience that with him. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you have someone to go with that can afford it to go, I, I totally recommend it. It's fantastic. Never been to the upper deck party. Never been to tops. Um, so I can't, like I said, I can't speak to those, but I, Panini does a fantastic job with their, with their party. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Panini for that. Um, all right, let me make sure. Um, okay, so before I get into my tips and tricks and kind of wrap this video up here, we, we've been 44 minutes strong just now. So, um, something to keep in mind is while there's a lot going on with the show, there's a lot of stuff that you may not think about, and especially if you're a parent or you're younger, um, some things to keep in mind. So kids 12 and under are going to get in free all week, something to keep in mind. Um, and then there's a lot of stuff that goes on at this event, um, a lot of giveaways, a lot of freebies, a lot of cool stuff. So Beckett will run some like hide and uh, like uh, scavenger hunt thing where they'll put different cards on different tables. I think I've got a couple in the back here, um, but like different dealers or like panini or whatever they'll have these cards at their table there's a stack of them and you'll you'll go pick one up and if you collect all 12 you take it to beckett and you get like one autograph random autograph encapsulated card or panini runs a free kids case break um typically on saturdays um and then actually skip that question um there's box wars at Panini, so Panini will say, anybody that has a box of Excalibur basketball, bring it over, and that wants to be a part of this, and 20, 30, 50 people will gather around, and they'll say, tallest basketball player, so you go through, everybody busts all their packs, and whoever's the tallest basketball player wins, and it's some sort of, like, they'll, at, at one point, they'll give away a ticket to the, the VIP party, they'll give away a one-of-one -one card, they'll give away boxes, I mean, Panini does, Panini at the National is fantastic, um, I've dealt a lot with a lot of other companies there. Panini at the National is the king. They do it very well. They are very strategic. They do a fantastic job. So may not give Panini credit for all their boxes or everything they do throughout the year, um, but the National is done very well by Panini. So if you're looking for something to do, like, oh, I want to check something out, go to Panini. They probably have something going on that's cool and exciting. Um, Panini does redemption trade up. So if you've got like redemptions that have been in your account that have been sitting there for, I think it's like six months or a year, typically you can take them in there and trade them for a live card there. Well, they'll like, there's a hundred dollar box or a $200 box. And if you have a hundred dollars in book value, they'll take these six redemptions. You'll trade those in and they'll pull you one card from your sport. Like you say football, pick your football card and they'll give it to you. And then those redemptions go away. So you basically can get a hundred dollar card for six crappy redemptions. So they do something like that. Um, they're typically, again, redemptions you've already got entered into your account, not unused redemptions. Um, so, yeah, just some things that uh, you wouldn't think about. And I don't think I mentioned this earlier, so I apologize if I do. Um, but I kind of want to uh, go back and hit this before I go to my tips and tricks. So, real quick, what is the best day to go? This, again, like all the other questions, perspective. If you're like me, I typically say Thursday. The sooner you can get to the show, the better. I typically, am, I love to go through this stuff early, go through as much as I can before it's Saturday and everybody's gone through everybody's boxes for the last three days. So I typically say early, but if you're a parent and you have a, you know, five, six, seven, you know, anyone, any child under the age of 12, I would typically say Saturday's the best day. With the free box war and a lot of the promotional stuff going on the weekends, I think Saturday's a great day to go and you also don't have to take off work. Um, so again, it really depends on, on when, but I know... Um, 
a lot of people ask me like when can I go um, I know the first three to four years I did it I only went Thursday and Friday I was like I only need to go a couple days I wish I would have stayed longer again hindsight's 2020 I love it I'll be there on Wednesday at least I'd probably be there Tuesday helping some people set up and I'll be there through Sunday this year it's great I recommend it stay when you can go when you can um, I know someone had asked, uh, if I'm a two hour drive, should I go for one day? Yes. Yes, you should. You will not regret, man, I, I wish I wouldn't drove, you know, two hours to the biggest sports card show in the world. No, you, you won't regret it. It's awesome. Meet some people, have a blast. But even if you can only go one day, unless you're flying across country, then that's a different conversation. But if you can afford to go, go. It, it is awesome. You don't ever know when you'll get the next chance to go again. So I totally say, if you can go, go. Um, sooner the better for me. Again, a parent with a kid, possibly the weekend, if that's if you have to pick a day. Um, but just wanted to give some perspective on that. Uh, so the last section here, it may be a little long, but I kind of want to run through some of this stuff um, before I move on. So there will be a trade night this year. I am working on that now. Um, if you haven't seen my post about possible, um, like about the GoFundMe, um, for the event, please check that out. It could definitely help. But um, essentially, this is, uh, someone said, uh, what is your trade night and can I attend? So this is, I just want to be very clear, this is not my trade night. This was an event that was started by Kentucky Basketball Cards, uh, Mr. Jimmy Mahan, um, a couple years ago in Atlantic City. Uh, it was just a get-together a get together from people from Instagram to come and hang out and the first time I ever went, the first hour I was there, there was like five people. There was, there really wasn't very many people. And not a lot of guys showed up, and we hung out. And then it just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I know last year there was a couple days where over 200 people came in the door. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that happens at this. Um, it's a great time. I've met. It's probably my best memory from the National the last couple of years is being at this event and meeting people. Like, like uh, people that I've met on Instagram – that I've dealt with on Instagram multiple times. You're like, oh my gosh, you're this person. So Alexis, Aiden APC cards, um, uh, Michael, card collector 291, Granite, um, Josh LeBenz, David, um, I, uh, Ryan Cardboard. Um, I mean, there's, I mean, tons of people. Um, B Sports, Brad, I met him and his, and his kids, um, the CEO. So, I mean, it is, it is fantastic. Uh, if I had to do one thing about the National, going to the trade night that Jimmy put on would have been that event. I would have given up everything else. Right? It is, I mean, and Jimmy talks about this, and I'll get to this later, but I would not trade the memories I've made with some of these people in cards for any piece of cardboard. So if you can go to the, the trade night, go. Um, so, again, it was Jimmy's event. I've kind of carried it on as Jimmy's gotten a, jo uh, a different job that – won't allow him to be here. Um, I know he's going to try really hard to possibly make it, um, but it doesn't look like that may be an option. So I'm going to try to help with that. Uh, but essentially the event is its in the past. It's been a couple nights, one or two. It's going to be one this year. Um, with costs, I have a wedding coming. I've, I've said this before. This is kind of the point of the GoFundMe. I have a wedding two months after the national ends. Um, the trade night's kind of expensive. If you're familiar with renting a wedding venue, Think of something similar to this. I'm looking for a space that holds roughly 200 to 300 people for three hours at a time. This isn't cheap. Um, I've been quoted anywhere from 1,500 to four grand just for a room before service charge, before tax for three hours for one day. Four grand for one room for three hours. That doesn't include service charges or taxes. Um, some places don't let you bring in food. Some places do. One place told me $200. For two hundred fifty dollars for two hundred cookies, five hundred dollars for unlimited drinks for the night for the three hours. So, I mean, you start getting into the cookies, the drink, and the room. I think I got quoted twenty nine fifty before service charge of twenty percent and tax. So when you start adding all up, you get to four grand pretty quickly. You get to five grand pretty quickly. So this spend is expensive. So unfortunately, I don't have the capabilities to offer this on multiple nights. Um, I just think it makes sense to have it one great night where we can all come together, as many of us as possible, and hang out. Um, so as of now, this is tentative, and this could change, and I will keep you posted on my Instagram page, Card Collector 2, if you want updates. Um, but Thursday, August 2nd, from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. is the ideal target date. That is what I will be aiming for. 
If I find a location that is fantastic, it's big, they let us bring in food, they have tables, they have chairs, and it's 100 bucks, and they only got Friday, well, let's have that conversation. That makes more sense. If not, and I have signed a contract for a $2,000, $3,000 room that has everything we want, and it's a Thursday, and I get to pick the day, it'll be Thursday. Thursday, August 2nd will be the day. Um, again, could change, but... Um, for now, that is is that. So this is uh, this is an event meant for the Instagram card community. So this is meant for people that we've interacted with on Instagram. This isn't meant for, um, you know, dealers at the show that we don't know through Instagram to, to come and buy off kids. That's not what this is for. There will not be anyone here with booths or no one setting up to sell things. I'm, this isn't a show. I'm not here to compete with the national in any way, shape, or form. This is literally a meet and greet. This is hosting an event where the people I've met through social media can come and hang out and get to know one another, put names to faces. So I can say, oh, hey, that's Aiden, APC cards, or hey, that's Alexis, Fisher cards. So that's what this is for. So this is not to sell. I mean, if people are, people are going to be there through Instagram that are going to introduce themselves and they're going to trade in person or they're going to buy and sell in person. That will happen, but the intention is not for me to go and set up a big booth and you guys to come look at my stuff and have other people over here and they have set up and charge it like admission. That's not my intention. So I just want everyone to know that um, as far as admission, right now the plan, the admission will be free. I Admission will be free. This is not something we're trying to charge for. Um, um, because like I said, because this is an expensive event, I have a wedding coming up. I will pay for whatever's not covered um but i did start a gofundme page it's on my page the link is in my bio on my instagram page card collector 2 even if you can only make a five dollar donation every little bit helps i know we raised 115 dollars the first day that's great i set the goal at five thousand dollars because i realistically expect that to be the case if we hit the goal great and, and let's say it's five thousand dollars and i only spend 4200 to sign the contract the food and all that we'll figure out something to do with the rest this is not for me to gain any money i'm not trying to gain anything i'm simply trying to help alleviate the cost of this event because it is awesome and i know how how, how great it's been to me in the past so i'm just trying to help alleviate that cost especially with the wedding coming up and i want to have some money for the show like everyone else does um, so again, if you can look at the GoFundMe, just take a look. Like I said, even if it's five dollars, if ten percent of my followers donate five dollars, we would hit the goal. Just ten percent. So I know there's you know multiple people. There's people on here joining hundred dollar razzes in one day. Can you? I mean, I'm I'm sure somebody could give up five dollars for an event. Even if you're not going, shoot five bucks over. I'm like I said, I, I won't I won't beg anyone for donations. But if you're interested, check it out. I think it would be uh it would certainly be appreciated. Um, so again, I'll send any updates. To that on my Instagram page, Card Collector 2. Um, so yeah, I think that's all about the trade night. There will be more to come. I'll have more about that. So last but not least, the tips and tricks that I have not already mentioned um, for those that probably are going to be new to this event or um, maybe this is only your second time. So um, any trips I can tips and trick I can recommend. Um, first thing is 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 take a take a deep breath. You will walk in this airport hangar in Cleveland, and you will be astonished. There is, I mean, you're just, it's, it's overwhelming. That is the best word to describe this. It is overwhelming. And you'll start, you'll go in there, and you'll look. And I know what I did for the first time. I'm going here, and I'm going here. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. You're just, you're so just baffled by what is there and the, the sheer volume and quantity and quality of what is in this room it's it's overwhelming so just take a deep breath have a game plan walk in be organized i mean have a plan you want to go do beckett first so you want to go to panini first so you want to do tops or you want to look around you know if you go in there just like like you're just it's it's going to be overwhelming and it's going to get to you so kind of have a, a, a game a game plan in mind. I mean, this event for me, besides maybe Ohio State, Michigan, and my wedding this year, which is two months after the national, this is the event of the year for me. This I love this event. Getting to meet, I mean, I love this hobby, and I would love to be able to pursue this as a career one day, uh, and I'm working towards that. But the people I've met in this hobby are fantastic, and I love being able to spend that one week with these people. So I really look forward to this. So it's overwhelming for me, and this will be my ninth time in a row. So especially if you've not been, take your time and really enjoy it, but just take a deep breath when you get in there. Have, you know, Get focused. 
relax, take your time, and, and just enjoy yourself. So that that is what I would say. Um, let me see here. So another thing is bring some snacks or some drinks. If you're not doing the VIP package where you can get the VIP lounge to get snacks and drinks and stuff like that throughout, your general admission, drinks and snacks add up fairly quickly. You know, you get hungry midday and you don't want to leave for lunch, you want to keep looking. Well, you're at $4 for a Coke, $7 for a hot dog, and $2 for a bag of chips. You're $11 or $12 pretty quickly on something you could have brought in for three bucks, two bucks, a dollar. So something to keep in mind that doesn't hurt to like put a pack of gum in there or put a bottle of water or bring a granola bar, things like that that you may not expect. I'm not saying bring a a, a, ba a big ass bag of chocolate that you're going to leave in your bag that will get hot and melt in your bag. I'm not saying do that. But a, one or two snacks, some gum, a water, something like that, that if you get hungry or you or that comes up, you don't want to spend $12 to eat. And before you go to lunch or dinner, that might not be a bad option. Um, wear comfortable walking shoes. This is an airport hanger. So there's going to be concrete. You're going to be walking. So this is a, this is a big building, right? Airport hanger. It's, it's, it's massive. You're walking all over to go to different things. So wear comfortable walking shoes. The last thing you want to do is be in something uncomfortable when you're carrying around all your stuff and you're looking all over, you're getting up and up, up and down, moving from chair to chair and booth to booth and doing different things. You, the last thing you want to do is first day in already have back or hip or leg pain because your, your shoes aren't comfortable. So wear comfortable shoes. You will not regret it. Um, bring a phone charger. My, so my book bag had one built in. Um, I'll probably look at some sort of like Mophie, some like battery charging kit for your phone that you just plug your phone in while you use it. Um, you're going to go through your battery very quickly. The reception is not always the greatest. So it's going to drain your battery even quicker when it's searching for a signal. The last thing you want to do is be at this event without a phone. So especially if you're like me and you look stuff up on the internet, like eBay sales, you want to check comps, things like that. Have some way to check that. So whether you're going to bring an additional iPad, which I don't necessarily recommend, I would have a phone charger. It makes sense. Have some way to charge your phone. Um, yeah, to take that as you will, but I would definitely, that's definitely a recommendation. So one thing is, again, being so overwhelming, um, it's easy to get lost. So if you go up to a table and you see something you like, you're like, you know what, I'll be back. Let me think about that. And you leave, there's a good chance you may never see that card again. There's so many booths at this show, it's easy to get lost. So one thing I always recommend is, let's say this guy's got a deal I want, and I'm like, you know what, let me think about that. Let me go do some research, I'll be back. Take a picture of the booth. Step back, take a picture of the booth. Then what I do is I text it to myself and say, deal with LeBron, Kobe, Jordan, Trout, Harper, auto deal. Send it to myself. And then I get a text message for myself. Shows me a picture of that guy in his booth possibly or something about his table that make, would make me remember where I was. There's so many tables, so many booths. So if you leave one card at one table, you're like, I'll be back. You may never see that card again or even remember where that booth is. So... Use your notes, take pictures, text yourself. These are three tips that I typically use for keeping track of where things are if they're really important. Um, if it's not that important you leave, not a big deal, but if it's something you want to keep track of, that is a great way to keep track of it. Um, so bring a small quantity of supplies. I know some people have said, oh yeah, just get supplies there when you go bust your boxes. I don't necessarily recommend that. Um, maybe because I know what wholesale cost is on supplies or I've been to shops that don't overcharge for supplies, but I feel like supplies at the show can be pretty expensive. There's not a ton of people that sell supplies there. I know for specifically of one to two people that are at the every national that sell supplies. And when you don't have competition, this is just simple supply and demand. You gotta buy supplies. No one else has them. They're expensive. So what I do is I'll bring a couple of these like 100 count snap tights. I'll bring a pack of top loaders and some soft sleeves. Don't in my book bag. I'm not saying I'm going to sit down and soft sleeve every quarter card I get, but if I get, you know, if I'm going through a, a dollar box and I find a $25 or $30 short print, I might top load it. Well, I don't want to go buy a $4 pack of top loaders, so I have one there. So again, something to keep in mind. I'm not saying take a four row box of supplies, but throw a pack of top loader soft sleeves in a snap tight in your bag and you probably won't regret that. Um, so this is something Jimmy really hashes on and I didn't really take it uh, as serious initially, but it's definitely something I recommend. And that's, that's have a focus. So when you go to the show again, it is overwhelming. So if you just walk in, you're like, yep, I'm just going to do whatever. 
it, 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 it could, it's going to get even more overwhelming pretty quick. So there's thousands of dealers, thousands of people, thousands of cards. You know, every card company in the world, there's grading, there's case breaks, there's a case break pavilion there. Um, so what do you want to accomplish during your time there? I'm not necessarily saying you want to acquire this card, this card, and this card at this price. Um, um, I just want to read this. Um, but one of the things I do now is I take I, I plan this in so far in advance because, it, like, it goes by quickly. So if your goal is to, like, again, and I don't mean this only with cards. I mean this with people, too. Like, I want to hang out with some people from Instagram. I want to do the trade night. I want to do the Panini VIP party. Well, if I got trade night and VIP party two nights, that only leaves Friday night and Wednesday night to do something, right? Because those things are going to take three hours each. So you've really got to plan your time in advance. If you haven't done your hotel, that needs to be done. But again, just have a focus. So um, is there five things you, five cards you really want? I've seen lists like Carson Wentz Contenders, Derek Carr uh, Chrome Auto, um, things like that. Or I used to collect this card when I was a child. Like Reggie Bush was big when I was first getting into cards. Like right after that, Reggie Bush was big. So maybe a Reggie Bush Contenders Auto. Something that's, you know, you had as a kid that you want now. Um... You know, even if you don't spend every minute trying to accomplish every goal, I'm not saying that, but just kind of have an idea of what you want to accomplish when you go. So, um, and I will uh, kind of lead uh, end on this one because I think this is the most important thing. So I want to leave everyone that will watch this video with this. Um, and I appreciate anyone that's lasted an hour and four minutes so far. So um, make time for friends. This is a fantastic piece of advice. In the last couple of years, I have done this. 